Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. I'm going to explain something that we don't generally do for folks as a rule, but I did it on my own, and this is what's necessary if you're going to tile stairs or decks. Now this fella who owns this house just happens to be my neighbor. Good guy, good buddy of mine. He did his stairs last year, and I said, dude, good luck. It's going to last a season. What do you do wrong? Same thing I did wrong about 10 times when I was learning all this stuff. These are two by 12s. You put a two by 12, depending on what kind of wood, that's not really my strong point. They cup. Now this piece of wood right here is cupped like this. So is this one and the top one. They're cupped, meaning they hold water. Why did they cup? Well, because it's a two by 12. Generally you put two two by sixes next to each other and the rain goes through them and they don't cup or you get a monster piece like a header but these tend to cup so what I told him is next year man when you see this cup and what we'll do is replace it it will do to yours what we did to mine and what Jason is doing he's got Jason's actually doing all this work I'm just gonna explain it we've got a membrane so I told him go pick up the best membrane you could find a peel and stick so he came back with this it's good Good membrane is for shower pans, uh, decks, so that's what I'm talking about. Jay already spent about three hours just doing this. Putting on this peeling stick like right there on the fence, that is a real drag and it's a hot day. If it's a hot day, it sticks to itself. It's a nightmare to put it on. But what we've done so far is two days ago I pressure washed this and all the paint came off and he says, wow, I used some shitty paint, didn't I? I said, actually, dude, you used some great paint. This bottom step is concrete. I used 3,000 PSI. And that's pretty strong. Plus, I had a turbo tip on it. I couldn't pull any of this paint off this bottom step because it's concrete. I said, dude, you used a great paint, but the wood is what failed because the wood heats up and then it expands, contracts. It's right here in the sun and it's hot. Even right now, it's about 80 degrees. So. What I did is I pressure washed it and then yesterday I came and I put some caulking in all of these big gaps and to correct his uh, carpentry. This fella is a 40 year uh, mechanic and damn he's good at car uh, mechanics but he's about as good at carpentry as I am. We both ain't all that great. So anyway we had to fill the gap. Now what Jason's doing is this product here, it's a, the peel and stick, he's doing it now the wire. What kind of wire do you use? You could use expanded metal mesh like we're using. This is what I, I tell folks, you know, this isn't what we do for a living, but I know how to do it. This expanded metal mesh is self-furred. It's dimpled, which means when we put our stucco on it, even stapled down, it's still, the stucco is going to go be below it. It's going to fur itself. Here's another tip, guys. See how these stairs right here have this ridge? Well, I'm getting rid of that. Too much work. We're just going to put our stucco from here and take it right here. We are going to put corners on here. And then I'm going to make certain that I put a slope on this. Not a slope that you can fall down and crack your head open, but a gentle slope just so the water doesn't sit here. Um, let me see. I think I covered all the bases. Jay is going to finish doing this grace. I'll probably help him with that because it's hot right now. The sun's directly on it, and that stuff's a nightmare. I've done about 100 boxes of it. Unless you got two people, you're holding these big pieces, it sticks together. The wire here, Jay already pre-cut a whole bunch of pieces. He put it down, stapled it, put the next one on top, stapled that, and of course all these staple holes get caulking over it. And this is just a, the first part to the stucco. We're going to use a common cement. What is common cement? It says common plaster on the bags. That's a, that's a really strong cement because it's, it's not going to be concrete with the rocks in it, but stucco will work too if we go with the, um, the common. It's not great for spreadability, but I can spread it over this. I'm, what I'm looking for is strength, and I'm going to go about uh, three quarters of an inch thick. Now, what we did on the top deck here, <laughs> well, what we did on the top deck about eight years ago for my buddy is the deck leaked like a sieve. So he said, Kirk, I got people living downstairs. Can you fix it? We said, sure. We put the same product on it. We did wire, two coats of cement, and then we, we actually did an acrylic finish on here. And he says, well, Kirk, what's the difference between putting an acrylic finish on it versus tile? 
I said, dude, drop an egg on this and try to clean it the next day. Drop a glass of wine on it. Acrylic finishes are made for walls, not surfaces like this. But since he's my buddy and I have all these acrylics left over from other jobs, we're going to do it for him until he decides to actually place some tile on it. We're going to walk across the street for a minute. Another project. Another neighbor. It's a drag to have so many neighbors. Uh, anyway, he said, Kirk, you got any good paint I could put on the porch? I said, no, man. I got some acrylics you could put on. He did this three years ago. It's just wood. It's acrylic over the wood. It's prepped properly. And I told him every two years you're going to have to keep putting it over it when it opens because it's, acrylic finishes are really not made for wood. It's made for what we're about to do over there but it is 50 to 70 times thicker than paint so anyway i wouldn't advise this but he's my neighbor and I, he saw all my excess materials he said kirk come on man quit give me some of that stuff and rather than throw it in my dumpster i give it to him over here this is what my buddy carl should do no dennis over there he didn't do that hola ladies ah uh, i see Toki here that means jason's gonna leave soon for lunch this is what we are talking about what we're doing over at Carl's house is just the base. You do your membrane here and all the way up there. Hello, girls. All the way up to the top of there. We, we waterproofed this whole thing and Jackie and I actually did all this little bitty travertine tiles. Here's a tip, guys. Go with a big one. It lasts a lot longer. Anyway, we're going to take you back over here. Jason's going to finish doing all that. Uh, all that nasty prep work, which is the grace membrane, the wire, the corners. Then he's going to mix me up some cement and I got to get busy and uh, plaster it out real quick. We'll show you that when we get to it. All right, guys, for those of you who comment and say, hey, Kirk's not a professional. Hey, we just turned Jason's jukebox down, man. We were playing some Leonard Skinner, Freebird going along. We have to stop just for you guys. Okay, we're doing these stairs. I forgot where we left off yesterday because by the time Jay did all this membrane and wired this up, it was getting dark. Plus, he still had to caulk all these little uh, staple holes. Do you have to caulk staple holes on a membrane? Not really if it's on a wall, but if it's on a pan, such as a shower or a deck, you should. I'm going to give Jay a chance to bring these other buckets up for me because uh, he's stronger than I am, and I just like to apply. Anyway, guys, while he's doing that, a lot of different membranes. This particular company makes about 10 different membranes. I told the owner. Go get the thickest membrane you can get. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick. They also make the Sica membranes. They make the DuPont membranes. They make all kinds of it. Use whatever caulking is compatible with your membrane. And should you use Duro Rock for the stairs or your bathroom, you can. This is ten times better, ten times faster, especially if you know how to use the tools. Anyway, guys. Okay, see all this mud here. I already did these top steps. Got to have something to hold on to when you're doing this stuff. Okay, these are at an angle. These are supposed to be at a little bit of a down slant. That way they're not holding water. Okay, here's how I do it, guys. First, I'm going to get my corners. Hey, baby. I'm going to get my corners. You know I'm at home if my wife is right there. All right. I'm actually at my neighbor's house. We get, there, get these corners. Get these corners. Fill them up. Fill them up. Fill them up tight because those are an inch. Get your corners here. Get my other corner here, fill it up, fill these corners up. All right, now here, these are going to be at an angle. And I'm going to be using a Darby to make sure I get that angle. And some of you guys that are familiar with my work, you, you say, Kirk, you're not a real plaster because you use a swimming pool trowel. Actually, it doesn't matter the trowel, but it does on this. I cannot use a swimming pool trowel to do this properly. I need some serious corners. Okay, so I'm coming over here. Let me see. I don't want to get in my own way to show you guys how to do this. Nothing to it. Follow the contours of what the wire. Jake did the hard part already, and he gave me a template, basically. Now, all I'm doing here, guys, is, is using a little bit of skill and using common sense. And have I done this before? Absolutely. About, about 20 times. Have I failed before? Absolutely. And when I say failed, what does that mean, guys? That means, have I done it where water stayed on the step and created my own swimming pool or that cupping effect that I was talking about yesterday? Yes, I have done that too, and that's how you learn. You can do this with a template, or you can do it like I do. I'm doing it with a Darby. If you're doing it with a Darby, then 
when I'm on the walls, I generally have a slight curve in this. Uh, doing a straight edge for here, I got to get my curve out, curves out. Okay, I'm going to hug the bottom of this because I want these stairs to have uh, a slight kick in them. So I'm going to go tight here. I'm going to go tight here. Now here's the real tricky part, guys. And I've had problems with this before in the past, and I have had to come back and re-skim it. You don't want this to hold water, so you really got to know what you're doing. I had a piece of wood that I put here, and it's just a template. But that's too easy, so I'm going to use a Darby. Now this Darby, you come down at an angle, and you got to remember, you're, this cannot hold water, or it shouldn't hold water, guys. If it holds water, that means you're going to be back the next day putting a skim on it, and cement suckles on suckles don't hold very well for walking on guys so you better get it right the first time all right if you're not sure take it sideways where you can see your slant boom and come here if your ends are a little bit or of course if you're not sure call us because whether or not you do your membrane we'll come and stucco it if you do your bathroom shower same way the pan we'll come and do the the stucco so you could apply your tile over it, piece of cake. Okay, that's one done. We're gonna drop down and do the exact same thing. Okay, see where we're at? Kind of looking at it, get my square trowel where I got a couple holidays. Kind of look at it, see what's cockeyed and know where to begin. Okay, I wanna start here. I wanna start here. Get that so-called 45 just right. Acts as a kickboard, guys, and if some falls out, grab some of your spare stuff and put it on here. Bare stuff, put it on there, dang it. Okay, kickboard, here we go. Once here, now again, we're back to this right here. You could try doing this, like I do sometimes. They give you a bit of a template where you know where the hell you're at or close to it, because again, this cannot hold water. You want the water gradual, but you don't want the stairs too steep, otherwise someone can kill themselves, especially on a rainy day. And I have my bucket of water here. If the Darby gets too stiff, just take that water there and clean that guy. This serrated Darby, because I want this to set fast, because I am not climbing these stairs again. Maybe when it's all set, I can come up, when it's set, I can come up and hit it with a uh, hard rubber float. But that's it for those two guys right there. Now again, I've done this a lot of times before, guys, so I, I got a good idea. If it's not right, I got to come back with some polybond and fill a hole. We don't want swimming pool, guys. So Jason got to give me some more cement, but he can't while he's holding that camera. So what he's going to do is give me some more. We'll finish it all off and show you. Oh, by the way, too, show you one last thing. Cleaning my edges because I'm not coming back up here. If I come back up here, I'm going to stand on my own work. Okay, Jake, give me some cement. All right, guys, I got my last two bucket fulls. By the way, we use four wheelbarrows. I got my baby. We live across the street. She's sitting on this Drive It product, which we're going to uh, use after this cure. But you can do tile. And, of course, Dennis, my neighbor, my worst critic, man, he says, Kirk, all I see are metal corners. Disregard that. Here's the best part, guys. Excuse me. The easy part. Now I can lean on this while I'm not having to use my whole body. We fill these corners up. How easy is that? Now, guys, I got something to lean on. Put all my weight on here. Lean on that. Boom. Take it over there. Now, this part here, easy peasy. Especially when I don't have to hang over something. So that just basically mimicking what I did up top there. But with the use of this handy-dandy rail, man, that just... Show makes life easier. Boom. We take it here. Finish that up right there. Come on this other side. I'm going to have that coffee in a minute, baby. See, my wife, she loves me. She brought me coffee. Pretty much. Okay. Finishing up, finishing up. You guys want to see something funny? Show the pillow thing. My buddy here got a couple vicious little poodles man they're the nicest poodles when they're outside but when they're inside oh they try to get you every time 
and jump on you. No, there's no carriers. Carriers? You ought to know, Boy, Dennis. Oh, yeah, they're wild, yeah, all right. Yeah. I got beat once. Yeah, they bit me too. Jump, you know, jump. Uh, they're vicious little dogs. Don't bite too much hands. And Jay was here yesterday. He said, damn, Dad, worst part all day yesterday was listening to them dogs. They just didn't shut up. No, well, mean. they didn't shut up for... for for all the time I was here, so I just went ahead and put a pillow over there that I found on the street. Okay, I'm gonna put an ending on this, guys, but you see where you're going with this stuff. It's all about the right derby. You gotta know your materials. You gotta know what you're doing. And yeah, I can, Jay and I can do the cement work in about four hours, maybe five. The prep work, took Jay all day to do that prep work because there's a lot to know about how to wire it properly. And these corners are my guides that Jay put on. Without those guides, I'd be here forever trying to make those. I could make the inner corner here. I can't make this outer corner. Anyway, guys, you see where we're going with that? From me, Jay, my lovely wife. We thank you for watching, and we'll, we'll see you guys on the next one. Hey. <laughs> Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.